In 2021, she was convicted of illegally registering to vote due to prior felony counts. However, the conviction was later reversed. Robert F. Kennedy Jr. is expected to announce his running mate. Kennedy has publicly floated a number of people he's considering as his vice presidential pick, while many believe he's likely to choose lawyer and mega-donor Nicole Shanahan. The move could give Kennedy's long-shot bid for the presidency an influx of cash and momentum as he aims to get more state ballots. And that's the latest. I'm Mike Moore from your 24-7 news source, the Black Information Network and BINnews.com. Every day, a child in poverty waits for a sponsor as another day of hopelessness. There are thousands of kids who've been waiting over a year in their wait. Sponsor a child with compassion today. Just text the word radio to 833-93. Is this the title? This is the KBLA Sports Minute with Ray Richardson. Ray Richardson. I'm a bad man. USC is in the Sweet 16 of the NCAA Women's Basketball Tournament for the first time in 30 years. The Trojans beat Kansas by 18 last night at the Galen Center. Freshman All-American Juju Watkins had 28 points, 11 rebounds, and 5 assists. USC will play Baylor Saturday in the Portland Regional Semifinals. UCLA had a tough time with Creighton last night but held on to win by 4, 24 points from sophomore guard Kiki Rice. The Bruins advance to the Sweet 16 in the Albany Regional in upstate New York. Next up for the Bruins is the Defending national champion LSU on Saturday. The Clippers gave up 133 points to Indiana last night. They lost by 17. Fifth straight home loss for the Clippers. Russell Westbrook had 14 points and 7 assists in his first game back from a broken hand. LeBron's left ankle is bothering him again. He's doubtful for tonight's game at Milwaukee. No debates, no speculation, just the info you need. That's your KBLA Sports Minute. I'm Ray Richardson on KBLA Talk 1580. All I need is one mic. Reparations Now has been a rallying cry in this country and around the world for decades. But the demand has taken on new urgency with growing momentum on the issue led by the state of California, which has completed an extensive study and put forth recommendations to enact reparations. California's reparations actions have huge nationwide implications. The California Task Force was the first of its kind in the nation, and the states of New York and Colorado recently voted to take on the issue. Dozens of cities from coast to coast, including San Francisco, Boston, Los Angeles, and Detroit, have started their own reparations commissions. One of the first known reparationists was Callie House, who toured the nation advocating for reparations in the 1890s. But never in this nation's history has the movement to heal the harms of enslavement, institutionalized racism, and the system of white supremacy seemed so strong. The topic remains untouchable for most elected officials, and the call for reparations has not yet garnered widespread public support. Polling shows that most Californians agree that black fellow citizens are still suffering from the damage done by slavery and Jim Crow, but they still do not support cash reparations. The California Legislative Black Caucus has introduced a package of proposals for bills that do not include one penny of cash compensation, restitution, or repair. Governor Newsom and other lawmakers have distanced themselves from the concept of cash payments. While Newsom is right, cash alone will not repair our collective harm, the state's goofy legislative package ignoring monetary payments is disingenuous. California lawmakers need to step up and put a reparations bill for cash payments on the table. The issue of how it is funded, the timeline, or whether it impacts our current budget challenges can be addressed. But we must strike while the iron is hot or the window of opportunity will pass us by. If you agree that it's time for our lawmakers to add a bill enacting cash payments to their lineup, call them at 916-319-3868 and say, if it doesn't include cash, it ain't reparations. That's 916-319-3868. Tell them Cali House sent you. From Bruce's Beach to the California Task Force, the Golden State is a trailblazer when it comes to reparations. The world is watching. We must rise to the historical moment and set a precedent for cash payments along with legislative remedies and policies addressing the systemic badges of slavery and Jim Crow. We must insist on measures significant enough to help close the racial wealth gap. California must stand for cash, and the time for reparations is now. For KBLA Talk 1580, I'm Dominique DePrima. We welcome your comments. Cruising down the street in my 6 fall, jocking the freaks, clocking the dough, went to the park to get the scoop. 
Knuckleheads out there, cold shooting some hoop. A car pulls up, who can it be? A fresh El Camino rolling kilo G. He rolled down his window and he started to say, It's all about making that GTA. Cause the boys in the hood are always hard. You come talking to trash, we'll pull your car. Knowing nothing in life but to be legit. Don't quote me, boy, cause I ain't said this shit. KBLA Talk 1580. <clears throat> Rest in peace, Easy E. This is his angel versary. Um, can't believe he passed away in 1995. It's been a long, 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 long time. Um, and I, you know, it just seems like a long time, but it seems like a short time. I'm expecting to hear from Julio G. So hopefully he'll tap in. But um, it's just, for me, he represented, yes, Compton, but also L.A. Because when I moved to Los Angeles, I came from Northern California where I had a show called Home Turf. I had never interviewed Eric on that show. I had interviewed Ice Cube when he came to the Bay Area. Um, and that was the first time I ever talked to him. When, the next time I interviewed Ice Cube was when I had already been <clears throat> when the show was canceled um home turf was canceled after more than 200 episodes and i moved here to los angeles because i was like go where the food is you know what i mean go where the work is i didn't know anybody <clears throat> i packed my i packed all my stuff in a u-haul put my finger on what i thought was the middle of you know i saw a map of la and i thought well I don't know anything about it, so I just put my finger in the middle, <laughs> which in my on not expert opinion was West Hollywood. I didn't even know it was like the gay Mecca. And I just got an apartment in West Hollywood because it looked like it was right in the middle. Um, and, you know, started struggling, you know, and knowing no one, having no friends, no job. Um, and, of course, you know, that story has a lot more to it, which I'm not going to go all into it right now. But I finally, um, I was working as a freelance segment producer doing television for a show called Youth Quake. I did a bunch of other shows. Um, and then finally landed the job at 92.3 The Beat, um, which is, it was a show called Street Science. I had written it to be my next television show, but i didn't have any luck with people wanting to pick me up for a TV show. Those of you who know L.A. know that we don't care what you did in San Francisco. We don't care what you did in, even in New York. We, you, you, you need to prove it, show and prove to, um, to L.A. So no one cared that I had five Emmy Awards or that I had my own television show. I thought I'd get my next TV show right away. Nope. So Street Science was converted from a television pilot to a radio pilot and I ended up doing it on the beat and one of the early early shows that I did one of my my first show was with Paul Mooney <laughs> my very first episode was with Paul Mooney I, I don't really remember how that happened but I do remember it and he Paul Mooney um, was just always encouraging and amazing so that was helpful but one of the early shows I did was with Ice Cube and Easy E, and at that time they had been beefing, um, as is infamous. So it was a big deal having them together on one radio show. Shout out to my friend Mariama Gabeyu. At that time she was Mariama Snyder. She booked that. I don't know how she did it, but she did it. She was always doing amazing things. She was a assistant um, music director, I think, at the time. She went on to become assistant program director. She's not in the radio industry anymore, the music business, but she did some amazing things. And she booked that show, and that's where I first met Eazy E. Um, it was the second time I had met Cube. And it was just an amazing experience. I think it put my show Street Science on the map because people in the community were talking about it. 
And I was surprised because I knew NWA's music, obviously. I mean, I wasn't a super fan. I'm not going to lie. I've never been a big um, trap listener. I'm more of a (laughs) backpacks and conscious hip hop type person. But I knew the music and I knew the controversies. People were always putting me on panels to talk about whether we ought to be banning hip hop or whether hip hop was to blame for all the ills of society. So I knew about Easy E, but I didn't know him. And I was very surprised to meet um, someone who was almost shy in person, soft spoken, very respectful, nice. Um, we went on from there. From that conversation, I need to get that tape and put it up somewhere. I still have it. I think it's on DAT or something. Anyway, um, we went on from there to be friends. And I I can tell you that story. I was hoping Julio G would be here uh, to share with you. But um, uh, maybe he'll call in any minute. I'm expecting him to call in any minute. After uh, I interviewed him for my show, um, for street science, him and cube, um, we exchanged numbers, which is interesting. Cause I talk to a lot of celebrities and I, you don't get everyone's number. I don't even ask for people's number. If they want to give it to me, cool. Most of them, I don't have their numbers. Most of them I never have hung out with, but me and Eric exchanged numbers. And then he started hitting me up on my pager. <laughs> yeah. I had a pager, <laughs> uh, because he wanted to meet with the management of 92.3 of, of the beat. He wanted to meet with them because he wanted to do the ruthless radio show there. And he had been trying to get through to management and they were not responding. I think it was because uh, they were afraid of him (laughs) because at that time, almost everyone running um, 90, the, the beat were from the Bay area. Um, So, Da na na na! What happens next? Uh, we are celebrating the anniversary of Easy E's KBLA Talk fifteen eighty. KBLA Talk fifteen eighty is an intervention. When we come forward, includes you. KBLA Talk fifteen eighty, turning pain into power. power. We must understand the politics of our community, and we must know what politics is supposed to produce. Produce this election year. KBLA Talk 1580 is the place for politics, unapologetically progressive politics. And we've got two of the best and brightest to help you cut through all the noise. Weekdays at 1 p.m., it's a more perfect union with Dr. Nick Quarterly Corte. And at 4 p.m., it's Ariva Martin in real time. He's the university professor and distinguished member of the White House Correspondents Association. She's a best selling author and Harvard trained civil rights lawyer. And they are both here every day to help guide you through all the sh- this year because you know it's going to get deep. Get your politics on weekday afternoons at 1 p.m. and 4 p.m. with a more perfect union. Hosted by Dr. Nick Quarterly Corte and Ariva Martin in real time. Only on KBLA Talk 1580. We've got your black. black. It's been said that when someone you love has Parkinson's, you have Parkinson's. The Parkinson's Foundation knows that the disease doesn't just affect the diagnosed. It affects everyone who supports and helps care for them. If you have questions, the Parkinson's Foundation has answers. We can help you understand the disease. And give you tips for living a better life. Find your answers at Parkinson.org or call 1-800-473-4636. The Parkinson's Foundation. Better Better lives. lives. Together. She posted about us just now. Celebrities can't get enough of Biana's bespoke skincare line. She has 147 million followers. How do we monetize? She needs a social media associate to help her with the hype. We should repost this. Do we need a hashtag? Indeed can help her hire great people fast. I need Indeed. Indeed you do. You can schedule and conduct virtual interviews all from your employer dashboard. Visit indeed.com slash credit and get $75 towards your first sponsored job. Terms and conditions apply. 
The thing no one tells you about periods is that your flow changes every day and so should your tampon size. Tampax has five absorbencies to match your changing flow. If it hurts to remove, go down a size. If it leaks, go up a size. Only Tampax has a leak guard braid to help give you up to 100% leak and odor-free protection. All day comfort and protection for under $5 a month. Based on average U.S. consumer usage at manufacturer's suggested price, however, pricing is at the sole discretion of the retailer. Excludes eight count. Sorry, but we actually have a wait list for our Monstera. Shaw's greenhouse is really bringing in the green. We can't keep snake plants and stuff. She needs a construction manager to build on her roots and grow. We could add a whole section for ferns. And here we'd have dahlias, dahlias, and more dahlias. Indeed can help her hire great people fast. I need Indeed. Indeed you do. You can schedule and conduct virtual interviews all from your employer dashboard. Visit indeed.com slash credit and get $75 towards your first sponsored job. Terms and conditions apply. Thanks for waking up with Dominique DePrima on KBLA Talk 1580. Well, I'm easy. I got women galore. You might have a lot of women, but I got much more. With my super duper group coming out to shoot. Easy E, homegirls cold knocking the boots. Cause I'm a hot thugster. I used to be a monster. And if you hurt, you think I own a drugstore. Getting stupid cause I got it like that. And if a sucker talks trash, I give him a smack. KVLA Talk 1580. I Speaking about legends of Los Angeles, we have one joining us this morning. He's uh, probably one of the most uh, influential hip-hop DJs on the entire West Coast, straight out of Linwood, California. Uh, he really played a huge role in the rise of, 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 of rap music, hip-hop here um, in L.A., um, in, on the West Coast in general, when he was on K Day, when when 1580 was K Day, when it was legendary, um, he's you know done all kinds of things, touring with Cypress Hill, um, appeared on many different um, album projects. Um, Julio G, <laughs> Ruthless I'm Radio. Here. Good morning. <laughs> it's amazing. I'm having flashbacks right now, even hearing your voice. I know because we go so back. We go back to the 90s. I will throw in I will throw in a Grand Theft Auto Radio Los Santos for people that know Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. Um, I do, I'm the main voice of uh, of Radio Los Santos. So shout out to DJ Pooh because he got me into the game. So that's always been a big thing for me. So, <laughs> so but yeah, yeah. But thank you for having me on. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. It's, so, it's, it's been a long time since we talked. So I always see you on a, on YouTube. I was telling you earlier. Um, so it's really that's cool wild. I, I guess you never know who's watching, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah, well, I mean, this is the, I don't know, almost 29th, I think, anniversary, 29th, anniversary yeah. of, of Easy's passing. It's weird because yeah, sometimes yeah. I obsess about it, but other times I forget. <laughs> it's like I'm in denial. I never yeah. forget his birthday, but sometimes yeah. I forget his anniversary. And so that's kind of how we connected, um, you know, back in the day when when we, I, me and Mariama finally convinced uh, station management to meet with Eric and uh, mm -hmm. he brought Ruthless Radio to the beat. He brought you with him. Mm -hmm. And that's how yeah, we yeah, became he, well, friends, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, that's, um, I mean, well, I knew Eric, I know Easy from uh, um, from the 80s when I worked at 1580 K-Day. Wow. So I met him since back then, yeah. I met him in, in 1980, I want to say it was 87. I, I met him at a Bell High School dance. We were <laughs> doing a live remote. <laughs> yeah, we're, we, used to do, uh, we used to do these live remotes from like, uh, we used to call it Friday Night Live. We used to do like from different locations, but this one location, this one time, Bell High School dances were very popular all around the city. Like everybody would come to these Bell High School dances, so they allowed. 1580 Katie was buzzing. You know, we were, we were doing our thing. They were like, we want to do, you know, have you guys come. So that was the first time we did that, and that's that's the first night I met Easy E, and he gave me the the song Boys in the Hood, and he asked me to play it, and uh, I played like one verse of it. And then later on that night, Tony G played a verse of it again because he convinced Tony that night. So that's how we met him. You know, what I mean? we <laughs> met him on, 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 prom, on promoting. But that's that's how I actually met Easy the first time. And then and then we continued to play a lot of his music after that. And then later on, he came and uh, um, I worked with him actually on Ruthless with a with an artist called Terry B. I did some songs for her, so I would still see Easy through that kind of process of doing that record. And then later on, he came and said. 
hey, I want to take y'all to a radio station. I want to do a radio show. <laughs> so <laughs> we're like, oh, okay. We weren't really into radio anymore. We were producing music at the time. We are producing Kid Frost, Mellow Man Ace, and other people. So we were kind of busy doing that. But he um, he t- talked us into it. He took us to 92.3 to beat. And then we talked him into doing a ruthless radio show. And, and we did it on Saturday nights. And it started July of 1994 and um unfortunately he passed in march of 95 but yeah you know we we we, we uh we were able to to do that but then that helped launch my career as julio g because it was because of that what happened with easy the reason why i started to talk on the mic because i wasn't talking on the mic i just used to just dj and talk a little bit and produce the show i, I wasn't really trying to be a radio dj that kind of happened because easy passed away kind of forced me into the, into mm-hmm. the position mm-hmm. so and you were, that, you, know. you were great yeah, at it you were great at it yeah i remember I because i remember talking to station management like we should have julio g should be on more he should not just be on saturdays well you know what happened was that uh i remember i was a key was it keith now nah, yeah keith keith right keith right yeah, okay yeah keith was the one one day when i was walking in the hallway he says hey man why don't you talk more on the show I said, oh, no, I don't really do it. No, nah, man, I want to hear your voice more because when you do talk, you know, they, that that's kind of got, got me going. But what really happened was that we were doing a commercial for the Ruthless Radio Show at our studio, and Easy used to kind of – we would produce it, and he would kind of talk. And so this is like the third or fourth commercial, and he says, I want you to end – I want you to, to jump in and talk at the end. And I'm like, what? Like, I don't want to do that, man. I don't, nah, you do it. He's like, nah, nah, you talk at the end. So I went in the booth. I was messing up because I really didn't do that, so it took me a while. But then at the end, when I was done, he's like, hey, how do you say 92.3 to beat in Spanish? And I was like, what? you want me to say it in Spanish? He's like, yeah, man, say, say it in Spanish. And so I said, 92.3. He's like, that's it. Say that. And I'm like, and I swear, I, I swear, swear to God, that's so easy. Easy, that sounds stupid, man. Come on. Like, I thought, <laughs> like, come on, man. Come on, bro. And he was like, nah, man, that's how you're going to get the Latinos. Trust me. So Easy was a real, he was ahead of his time because I didn't think that. I thought it was corny. I thought I really thought it was yeah, corny. Yeah, and it thing, became a thing. That became a huge became thing for the station. It yeah. Me, yeah, it was separated from me from everybody else, really, was that little tagline when I was at the everybody knew that's Julio G. Yeah. So that's why I thank, I thank him for that, too. That was not something that I actually came up with. That was the idea that he had. He, he had a lot of ideas. And he, he did. He was very, very smart. Yeah, he was. He was a lot more than people ever thought about him. He was very a visionary. He was way ahead of his time, you know. Looking yeah, and he and, and, now, and you when know? you when you talk about the solidarity or maybe marketing, I don't know, maybe both. Yeah. With the Latino community, he was way out there. I mean, I remember. I mean, he basically signed a whole neighborhood, right? Yeah. <laughs> to the yeah, label. Sure. He had he had Brownside. He yeah. had Frost. You know what I mean? He, yeah. he had originally worked with Crazy D. Like, a lot of people don't know the early NWA records. He, he had a guy named Crazy D, a Mexican guy that was a friend of mine, too. And uh, so Crazy D was really tight with Easy. That's why he came out in Dope Man. And I forgot what, what other song he's on, but, but uh, Crazy D was a, a Mexican guy he used to hang out with. But Easy used to always tell me that um, that was his big market because he understood who bought his records. He was very, very analytical back then like he understood where what markets he knew everything about his music like he knew where it sold the most who bought it the most yeah it, it was really interesting how he, he broke that all down to me one day and I, and he was like yeah latinos man that's my market man like one day we went to a lowrider show and he gave away a big boom box and he walked around the whole crowd because he wanted to, to he didn't want to be like in the background and you know what i mean he wanted to be like he wanted to be out with the crowd you know what i mean and so, so he he really understood that about about his his that market, you know. Yeah, I remember when you guys came, when you guys finally started that ruthless radio show. It was a, the buzz was crazy because nobody had ever really heard anything like that before. I hadn't. Well, well oh, you got to remember, Easy E was the first rapper to have a radio show. Ah, that's, wow, that's true. Time he was. Yeah, so and and I want I want people to understand the audience. Let me just give you some stuff about Easy, how he thought. The reason why he did ninety two point three the beat wasn't necessarily that he wanted to be in ninety two point three the beat. He wanted to understand how it worked because he was gonna buy a station in Arizona. And he already had told us that. He wanted us to eventually move to Arizona and he was gonna buy the station for like a million dollars and he was gonna call it K E Z E. And so that's why he wanted to be in 92.3 to be. He's like, we just got to soak up their game. He would tell us, 
Like, <laughs> we got to soak up their game and how they doing it. And then when I make the move, you, you and Tony, it was me and Tony G, he was like, I'm going to buy you some houses out there, and I want you guys to run. So that was kind of his thing. So he was kind of already ahead of, like, understanding, like, what he wanted to do. You know, and that's why he – that's one of the reasons. He, he also wanted to, to play his music. And just so people know, Thuggish Ruggish Bone broke off of Ruthless Radio Show. Nobody had Bone Thugs and Harmony. He was playing Thuggish Ruggish before anybody had it. Well, he, so yeah, he played he it on Street Science, it. too. He was yeah. like, play yeah. this. And I was like, what is this? <laughs> it yeah. sounded weird to yeah. me. So, I mean, I love yeah, Bone, but at the was, time it sounded like Thuggish and Ruggish. It was just, what the heck is this, Eric? <laughs> Now you want to hear something funny, Dominique? We would, we would, we didn't really, we wouldn't, we weren't really feeling that record like that. Me and Tony, we, it was cool, but we were like, ah, oh, you gonna play it again, man? Like, <laughs> we, we didn't really, we didn't understand. I mean, honestly, it's not time, their but, best song. I mean, <laughs> but, I mean, no, I mean, I think, I think what it was, it was just so new. And it was different. It was, nobody yeah. was used to. Yeah. It was different. It was for that time. Nobody was rapping on the slow. 70-some BPM beats. And, and right, and, and sort of singing, yeah. and they had that weird kind yeah. of voice on that record. That double time on it, yeah. So it, they, 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 it was so different. But in, I was in the car one day with Easy when it already had blown up, and we were listening to another station playing it. I was in the car with him, and I, I asked him, I said, hey, Eric, man, I ain't gonna lie to you. I wasn't really hearing that record, man. That's, and it's rare for me because I, I have a pretty good ear for him. Yeah, you've got a great ear. You know, yeah. so I, so, so, but, but I missed that one. I told him, so I admitted it to him. And man, I missed that one. I said, "What made you sign them, Eric?" He's like, "You know what, Julio G, man? I just I knew they didn't sound like anybody, and I would rather take a risk with something that sounds like not that doesn't sound like anybody than to go do the same thing that Andre Harrell and the rest of these dudes are doing." Mm. So that's why I had to. I got to under. I got to understand easy. He'd rather take a risk with. He just knew that they were different. That's what he told me. Yeah, I just did, I knew I never heard nothing like this, so I knew it, it was something. So, I, but look what it is today. They revolutionized hip hop. Yeah, the way people for rap, real. They they basically rap like Bone Thugs today. I mean, the the, the, the double time styles and slowing the beats down and the the singing parts and all that. That's that's all Bone Thugs, you know. So much love to them brothers. Man. I love those guys. Yeah, uh, absolutely same. But it, at the time, it was like hearing something from another planet. Um, for sure. And. But I think, you know, you, you mentioned Keith Nafley. Keith Nafley was a uh, program director at that time. And he was also a visionary because once he met Eric, it was like everything Eric said goes. I remember after me and Mariama talking them into meeting with Eric, I got in trouble for this for this affirmative action show I did <laughs> with K-Rock. Mm -hmm. And they were like all on my case. And Eric had to go in and say, man, controversy sells. Let her do her thing. I'm like, wait a minute. When did this guy become my boss when I had to get him in here? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but he knew. No, he was. He, he really. He understood. He understood the game. That's one thing about Eric. Do you think he's underrated now, in hindsight? Because people think, say, "Oh, he can't rap," or "He didn't do all that." You know, I feel like people downplay the role that he played in in NWA and in hip hop in general. Um, I I absolutely think that people don't really understand the the. Because look, look, I was telling somebody this other day. A lot of things that Easy did was first, like. Before Easy E, record labels didn't call themselves Ruthless. But after <laughs> Ruthless, then they all called themselves Death Row, Aftermath. Everything had to do with some cool, like bad boy. It had to be like No Limit. It had to be something that was like a Ruthless. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Because that, that mm -hmm. came from Easy E. Just a, a name alone, the way he approached He didn't just call it like East Street Records or right. you know, just something normal. Just, you know, like every other label, that didn't really matter back then. But now... Now, because of Easy E, your rap, your label name has to be something dope because that's because of Easy E. Easy E started that, you know what I mean? And let's be real, I, I knew Yella and Dre from Wrecking Crew days when I was at 1580K. They, we they would play our dances. They 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 would play World on Wheel Skate Land, and then we'd play all the records. I we admired them. I, I always looked up to Dre and Yella and them guys, but they weren't really gangsters, you know. Easy brought that. Easy made them look like that because they didn't dress like that. They, that came after Easy e and then Dre never went back to that Wrecking Crew sound after that. He always stuck to what he's done to this day, which is what Easy e brought him because that wasn't what Dre was doing back then. He was doing 
cabbage patch and give me some juice. As, and, as and Eric juice. liked to point out all the time, we're talking, yeah. with, yeah. we're talking with Julio G. We got news, traffic, and sports right here, Julio. And we'll continue the conversation when we come forward on KBLA Talk 1580. She's reclaiming her time on KBLA Talk 1580. More First Things First with Dominic DePrima when we come forward. Thank you for joining us. I'm Mike Moore. Now here's the latest from the Black Information Network. The fight against the removal of downtown Asheville, North Carolina's Confederate statue is finally over. Everything but the base of the Vance Monument was taken down in 2021 before a lawsuit was filed by a historical preservation group. The North Carolina Supreme Court ruled against the challenge recently, which means the base will now be removed. The mayor told WLOS-TV that the space will be used for celebrating inclusivity. Arnold Schwarzenegger says that he's recovering from surgery after he got a pacemaker implanted. The actor and former California governor announced the news on his podcast saying it happened last week. Schwarzenegger has had three open-heart surgeries in the past and says scar tissue from his last one caused an irregular heartbeat. And that's the latest. I'm Mike Moore from your 24-7 news source, the Black Information Network and BINnews.com. Every day, a child in poverty waits for a sponsor is another day of hopelessness. There are thousands of kids who've been waiting over a year in their wait. Sponsor a child with compassion today. Just text the word radio to 83393. Is this the title? This is the KBLA Sports Minute with Ray Richardson. Ray Richardson. I'm a bad man. USC is in the Sweet 16 of the NCAA Women's Basketball Tournament for the first time in 30 years. The Trojans beat Kansas by 18 last night at the Galen Center. Freshman All-American Juju Watkins had 28 points, 11 rebounds, and 5 assists. USC will play Baylor Saturday in the Portland Regional Semifinals. UCLA had a tough time with Creighton last night but held on to win by 4. 24 points from sophomore guard Kiki Rice. The Bruins advance to the Sweet 16 in the Albany Regional in upstate New York. Next up for the Bruins is defense national champion LSU on Saturday. The Clippers gave up 133 points to Indiana last night. They lost by 17. Fifth straight home loss for the Clippers. Russell Westbrook had 14 points and 7 assists in his first game back from a broken hand. LeBron's left ankle is bothering him again. He's doubtful for tonight's game in Milwaukee. No debates, no speculation, just the info you need. That's your KBLA Sports Minute. I'm Ray Richardson on KBLA Talk 1580. I have diabetes. I'm at risk for pneumococcal pneumonia. I have asthma. I'm at risk, too. If you're 19 or older with chronic conditions like asthma, diabetes, COPD, or heart disease, or are 65 or older, you are at increased risk for pneumococcal pneumonia. Ask your doctor or pharmacist about Prevnar 20, pneumococcal 20-valent conjugate vaccine, a Pfizer vaccine that can help protect you against pneumococcal pneumonia in just one dose. Even if you've already been vaccinated with other pneumonia vaccines, Prevnar 20 may help provide added protection. Prevnar 20 is approved for adults to help prevent infections from 20 strains of the bacteria that cause pneumococcal pneumonia. Continued approval may depend on a supportive study. Don't get Prevnar 20 if you've had a severe allergic reaction to the vaccine or its ingredients. Adults with weakened immune systems may have a lower response to the vaccine. Side effects include pain and swelling at the injection site, fatigue, headache, muscle, and joint pain. For full prescribing information, please call 1-855-213-2138 or visit Prevnar20.com. Some days I cover up because of my moderate to severe plaque psoriasis. Now I'm hitting the road with clearer skin thanks to Sky Rizzi, Rizm Kism of Rizza, a prescription-only 150 milligram injection for adults who are candidates for systemic or phototherapy. With Sky Rizzi, three out of four people achieved 90% clearer skin at four months. And Sky Rizzi is just four doses a year after two starter doses. Don't use if allergic to Sky Rizzi. Serious allergic reactions and an increased risk of infections or a lower ability to fight them may occur. Before treatment, your doctor should check for infection and tuberculosis. Tell your doctor if you have an infection or symptoms, such as fever, sweats, chills, muscle aches, or cough, or if you plan to or recently received a vaccine. Thanks to Sky Rizzi, there's nothing on my skin, and that means everything. your doctor today about Sky Rizzi, the number one dermatologist prescribed biologic in psoriasis. And visit skyrizzy.com or call 1-866-SKY-RIZZY to learn more. Psst. Hey, I have a secret. Uh-huh. I use secret whole body deodorant because more than just my armpits stink. Uh-huh. Can I use it where my bra rubs under my... Oh, <laughs> yeah. And what about down there? You know, my... Totally. Four out of five gynecologists would recommend it. So I tried it, and now I get 72 hours of freshness. freshness. From my pits to my... 
Ooh, I love that it's a spray. Me too. And it comes in sticks and creams too. Go get your secret whole body deodorant. Paid for by government.com. Did you know the United States Mint has issued a new Morgan silver dollar coin in proof condition for the first time? Not only that, they are also minted in 99.9% pure silver for the first time ever in history. Coin experts are calling this an amazing opportunity for anyone that knows the enduring popularity of Morgans. But you must hurry. Only 400,000 of these legal tender silver dollars were issued. These first ever Morgan silver dollars are brand new with stunning mirror like finish. Minted by the iconic San Francisco Mint. Call now and you're guaranteed a new first ever 99.9% pure silver proof Morgan dollar. To learn more, call 1-800-973-9717. If you order now, you will receive a free coin collector bonus pack, a $25 value free with every order. Call 1-800-973-9717 now to secure your new Morgan silver dollars before they are gone. That's 1-800-973-9717. This is KBLA Talk 1580, where hate meets a scholarly match. Hey, hey, hey. My name is Easy, yeah, this is true. Keeping your attention is what I'm gonna do. Hardcore, yo, I can never be soft. Acting on my destiny, say the boy goes off. Building up momentum with a touch of my rhyme. Suck to stay away because, yo, they know the time. Quiet on the seconds, I'm about to begin. And if you didn't hear me, boy, I'll tell you again. My name is Easy, or just call me E. But it doesn't really matter to me because I'm the same person. KBLA, same Talk 1580, talking with Julio G. And we we are actually um, lifting up Eric Wright, Easy e who passed away on this day 29 years ago. Um, I have my own conspiracy theories. I'm not going to ask Julio G. about his. Um, I, will, I, will say, I, I will say, Dominic, because we both know him for so long, um, I mean, I mean, because it's been so long, and we yeah. like, we both knew him. You knew him for a long time, asked, yeah. A lot of people, yeah, we, a lot of people have asked me about that, like, and I've always like kind of like, I guess because I'm older now, and I just time has passed, and it just, I just, I think I'm because I got three grandkids now. I just, I just, I'm a Congrats. different person today. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm just, uh, thank you, thank you. I, uh, I just matured a lot in in a way, but I, I'm more comfortable saying today stuff that I wouldn't say back then because I didn't want to put myself in a position and then have people all over me because I was around Eric to the last days you know yeah I actually took the last picture I mean I believe that I took the last picture of him alive wow the day we took this picture together yeah because that was that Saturday night um he walked we, we took a picture with a group called the knots right after the show and uh just coincidentally it was just my friend happened and said hey let's take a pic real quick and we took that picture and he sent it to me and um, we walked outside and that's when easy told me, Hey man, I'm gonna go to the doctor on Monday. My bronchitis is acting up. He had just came back from New York. And so he was not feeling good. And, and we wanted, and he told me that when we walked outside and we talked about how he ran into ice cube and in New York and how they talked about getting the group back together. But I didn't talk to him. I talked to him. I talked to him from the hospital after that Monday, like next time I talked to him, he had just gotten out of the hospital. And, and then we talked like maybe like, three or four more times before he passed away from actually the hospital. So I, I believe in my heart that, you know, somebody killed Eze. e you know, I could say that a little bit more comfortably now, but I, I, there was a conspiracy. Be- I mean, they were, they want, they, they were coming after somebody wanted to get his label and it was behind, I believe it was behind that. And it was behind some money that was owed to him. And so it, the means of business is an ugly business. And I learned a lot, with easy because of that i would never have thought that they would come after him like that you know but look looking back on it now that's that's just that's just my belief i i don't want to say that i have the proof and all this kind of stuff but just because of our conversations that we had and and the way it happened it just happened so fast it happened you know? so never fast seen nothing like that nope. so fast you know? and i actually have I mean, a number of friends who died of aids hiv and i never believed that i i, I just I believe someone killed him too. Um, and that was yeah. just based well, on believe, my instinct that, and what I saw at the time. I don't know how and I don't know why, but that's what I believe. I, I, I believe that he may have died of HIV. I believe that. Yeah, it's possible. But the way he got it, the, the way he got it is why I believe was the, was, was the foul play. And that's what I, I think he didn't know that he had contracted it like that. They came, they, I, I believe they came after him. So that's, that's right. I, like I said, I can't go too far because I put myself, because, it could get dangerous for me, you know what I mean. But I don't want to. I don't want to just 
you know. But I'm just going to say that for the fans so the fans really know down deep inside when you have that kind of question about it, it, that they were coming after Easy e because of his label and money that was owed to him. And that's why I believe happened to him. And, and a lot of people think it's Jerry Heller. Let me clear that up, too. Mm. It's not Jerry Heller. It's not Jerry Heller. You know, I think that mm. – I'll go. I'll go as far. I'll go as far as to say without putting myself in a jam like that. But I'll go as far to say that I believe that Jerry introduced Easy to his problem, but not intentionally. Mm. Like not 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 in a sense of of that he planned that. Like he. I think it was just he was he he didn't understand what was going on. He, you know what I mean? And I'll leave it at that. But but that's that's kind of hot because a lot of people always go back to Jerry. But I, I knew Jerry very well, and even. You know, me and him have been friends for just as long as me and Eric have been friends. I've known Jerry that long too. So, and I, and Jerry was my manager for a long time till the till the day he passed. Actually, he still he negotiated all my deals. So I knew Jerry very well. So, um, um, I, I I don't I don't a lot of people use think him as a scapegoat. He, he's an easy one to go to, but it's a little there's more layers to it than him. So that's why people don't know that. So that's why people mm. get a little just they throw it at him. You know what I mean? So it's not about him. It's a little deeper than him. But yeah, that's all. That's what I, I'll just say that because I I don't really talk about that publicly because if I'm talking to you and, and and it's been a long time, I'll just say it today. Yeah, I believe that something happened with Eric. Yeah, so we're gonna say, leave that yeah. there. I wasn't even trying to make you go there, but I appreciate um your sharing that on this show. Um, I, I and I do want to talk more about Eric, but I want to talk a little bit about you because it's been such a long minute. Um, it's it to me, it's interesting that you, who always wanted to be behind the scenes as a producer, never even wanted to talk on the radio, now um, end up doing this, you know, voiceover work, which is you know the Grand Theft Auto piece. That's like a, that's like being a voice actor, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like, it's like, it's like... Like the biggest game in the world, you know, that I could ever been even imagine to be in. So I, that's why I always thank DJ Pool because he's the one that he 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 came up with the concept to 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 put me in Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. So, and then I got to play myself because not not everybody in the game gets to use their their original name. They they want you to use an alias name. Mm. But he 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 fought for me. He fought for me with Rockstar. And he's like, nah, I can't. He can't be another name. He has to be Julio G in the game because it's authentic to Los Angeles and it just can't be nothing less than that. So that helped me out a lot too because that's how when I traveled the world with Cypress Hill touring, everywhere I would go, somebody would bring up, oh, Grand Theft Auto, oh, San Andreas. And <laughs> it was like, it was, that was a, that was a, it's just a real blessing that DJ Pooh hooked me up with that because I didn't know, I don't play video games, so I didn't know what I was getting myself into until the game came out. And he told me, you're going to be on the biggest game in the world, bro. I'm like, oh, okay, I, okay, cool, whatever. I, I didn't really understand, you know what I mean? Like, I, I kind of understood, but until it came out, then I'm like, oh, man, this is big. Damn, my bad. You know, so, yeah. You forest gumped your way into that one, but that's all good. I did, man, yeah. But that's yeah, also part, yeah. partly like a side effect of being a legend, right? Um, I think, you know, back in the day, the um, idea of DJs as sort of celebrities or, or worldwide draws on their own was less... It was a thing, but it wasn't like it is now. Um, yeah, yeah. How is that for you? I mean, you know, you you continue to work with Cyprus, but, you know, you've worked with some of the top um, MCs in the game, right? Um, mm -hmm. Snoop yeah, Dogg, yeah. Exhibit, et cetera, et cetera. How is that for you being that, you know, the state of the DJ today and you being an, an iconic one? Um, oh, well, you know, I, I, it was a different time back then where it was like, there wasn't so much access to like you have like to music today, you know what I mean? So you kind of had to listen to the DJ. You, you, you had to, <laughs> like the radio was really like the place to go to if you wanted to understand what was happening. But then the responsibility was on people like me and, 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 and I would give props to the Baker boys and, and wake up show and, and, um, and, and many others, you know what I mean? That we all came with, a, with, a, with our sound, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And what we thought hip hop and where hip hop should be because we kind of, we kind of carved it out, you know, because it was our ears because it wasn't really people didn't really know what was what. Now, now you look back like you me, you understand, Dominique, like you look back now and think uh, Gangstar, no, that considered like legendary classic artists today. But back then we had to fight to get those records on. They yeah, that's right. People were like, who? You know what I mean, we were. Yeah. Who? You know, yeah. no, this is too. This is not radio. And this is this doesn't fit. And so we would have to fight a lot to push those records especially for me because i pushed the west coast 
and that just wasn't popular as much as people think today when you see Snoop <laughs> sure and wasn't. Ray and nope. Ice Cube and these guys getting the star and the fuck of fame. In my time, I was fighting for these guys. That, that was uh, fighting for those records to get on the radio. They didn't want me to play certain songs on the radio. They, they, it was a, a lot of tussle and back and forth. And, and I went through a lot to get the West Coast where it's at. The, you know, people look at it today as legendary. And I look, sometimes I'm listening to this stuff. I'm like, I remember they hated that record. And now it's like, <laughs> oh, that's a classic for the West Coast. And I remember I went through hell for Sugar Free. To get Sugar Free, to play Sugar Free, to, uh, I mean, I mean, I had to have the super cleanest version of I'd rather give you my, my B to play on the radio <laughs> or Fly for Life. Or not. Sugar Free was a little hard to play yeah. you know, because they didn't want to, they pushed back a little bit on that. You know what I mean? But Represent the GC was another record that, 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 that I took heat for and calling out names and, there was some records out there, so so it, it, it took it, you know we pushed, you know what I mean? We pushed, and, and I'm glad that we did because it it, it we were right, we were right about yeah, what you it was were about the movement, you know what I mean? Do you so, do you so, ever so. think that you that you should get more credit? I mean, now you hear folks yelling, you know, DJ call it on a record or yeah, whatever, yeah. and people <laughs> people get a lot of credit for a lot of things, but sometimes do you yeah. ever feel like the hidden hand of hip hop on the West Coast? Um, you know, I mean, I will tell you like this. It does bother me at times because I think there's a lot of people that take credit for my work. Yeah. And they, or they try to they try to they try to claim, oh, we're West Coast and we do this West Coast and I'm West Coast and I'm like, yeah, that's cool, but I started that. Like, if you go back to to pictures, I'm the only DJ that ever put a, a W in a picture. Never. <laughs> you never see. You can go back to the, my early '90s pictures. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You, you ain't gonna see nobody. Nobody was banging on the West like that. It wasn't popular. The West wasn't popular. It was the, about the East Coast. Yeah, it Even wasn't a band, thing. I remember. I remember they. I remember. I I started E40. Like they didn't want to play E40 in L.A. They wasn't playing Be Legit. They wasn't playing records like they weren't playing Who Riders. They wasn't doing. Right. That. They weren't right. doing the Bay. I I started to bring the Bay too with me. Like oh man, I gotta I gotta click. I got to click the bay in with this too, because I was already playing too short, but I was trying to find more people from the bay to make it all West side radio, like to be really West, West coast. You know what I mean? But I think LA is just has that thing about it where they don't really give credit. Like on the East coast, mm. when I used to tour with Cypress Hill, when I used to tour with Cypress Hill and you'd be, a, this is amazing, Dominique. This is, and I'm, I'm very honored by it, but it, we used to play a, a show in New York city every Halloween. They still do it to this day. Cypress Hill's, Haunted Hill has been going on for like 20, some 25 years now. So every year we would play, and I toured with them for like 10 years. So I played that place 10 years with them. So every time we'd go to backstage, every every year would be different East Coast artists because you know how they do in New York, a little bit different. They, they kind of, they come out, you know what I mean? So yeah. every time backstage I would be, somebody would introduce me and they'll say, oh, this is, you know, this guy, this is Julio G. This is like the Funk Master Fletcher, like L.A., man, and, I'd be like, oh, damn, thank you, bro. Like, I'm honored. Like, for real. Like, because, you know, I love Funk Master Flex. You know, I was like, damn, thank you, man. I appreciate it. But the props they would give me in New York, it just felt like even more than LA. And I'd be like, damn, man, they don't even talk about me like that in LA like that. Like, but the East Coast, they appreciated what I did. They really were tuned in to what I was doing with the West Coast stuff. You know what I mean? So they gave me, that's why I say in LA, they gave me props. The hood does and the streets do. (laughs) The reason I'm laughing is because I say the same thing. I feel like a a lot of people take credit for stuff I've done, and I just say, but the streets know. The streets always know. know. Somehow the streets know. And and that gives me joy because I know I can walk wherever I, I need to walk, and I'm always getting love, so... Oh. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. We're That's talking awesome. with Julio G, the iconic Julio G, the Funk Master Flex of the West, on KBLA Talk 1580. More of First Things First with Dominique DePrima when we come forward. Have you fallen behind on your water and power bill? LADWP has made paying your past due bills even easier. Sign up anytime online for Level Pay to get set monthly bills that include past due amounts. Or check out the special extended payment arrangements of up to 48 months to help pay down your bill. Visit LADWP.com slash CARES and sign up today. That's LADWP.com slash CARES. 
With your Los Angeles Public Library card, you can access the latest music, movies, audiobooks, ebooks, graphic novels, and more, all for free. Check it out at lapl.org slash emedia. That's lapl.org slash emedia. Hi, this is Scott Trout of Cordell & Cordell. If you're a dad who is facing divorce, there are extra layers of stress that may include stereotypes and assumptions. No two situations are the same. Our legal experience and dedication prepare us for whatever legal challenges we face together. You need a partner you can count on. For more than 30 years, Cordell & Cordell has represented men in divorce. 1455 Frazee Road, Suite 1050, San Diego, California, 92108. Online at CordellCordell.com. Pizza's here. Oh, great. I'd love some, but I'm worried about my stomach issues. If you're worried about having diarrhea, gas, bloating, stomach pain, or loose oily stools, it may not just be stomach issues. It could be a condition called exocrine pancreatic insufficiency, or EPI. With EPI, the pancreas doesn't release enough enzymes to break down food, but EPI is manageable. Use the symptom checker on identifyepi.com and talk to your doctor. That's identifyepi.com. Sponsored by AbbVie. If you're looking for the most epic place on Earth, let's start at the base of a massive waterfall. Then trek through the thick jungle. Then climb to the peak of a snowy mountaintop. Then once you get there, keep going. Because with intelligent 4x4 and 7 drive modes and a Nissan Pathfinder, the search is the real adventure. Available feature. Intelligent 4x4 cannot prevent collisions or provide enhanced traction in all conditions. Always monitor traffic and weather conditions. Spilled your drink? Quick! The quicker picker-upper. Bounty picks up spills quicker. And each sheet is two times more absorbent, so you can use less than the leading ordinary brand. So, you can get back to your night. Bounty, the quicker picker-upper. At KBLA Talk 1580, we do more than just talk. You got a big mouth. Hello, Joe, you're up. Welcome. We're unapologetically progressive, and we don't black down. And we're talking with Julio G. Um, he is a super influential West Coast DJ, really almost single-handedly uplifting uh, West Coast rap at the time. And it is so important to put it in context. You know, it, none of these things were a thing. It wasn't normal. It wasn't even that normal to hear a uh, rap or hip hop in, in mainstream spaces like TV or radio. Yeah. Um, Julio G, what made you do it? What made you um, become a DJ? What made you pursue the music like that? What, you know, how did you how did you get into it? I, I got I actually got into it because of where I live at. <clears throat> I live in, in Linwood, and um, I grew up in in the time I, mo I moved here in 1972. So when I moved here, it was like a black and brown community, you know. So I had a lot of you know Mexican friends, and I had a lot of black friends, you know. But my first best friend was my black friend Marcellus. Rest in peace. He passed away in the early 90s. Yeah. Um, he he was a uh, he was like the most, he was like the influential person that I would, I would go back to. Like, if I had to think about it, he was the first person that introduced me into like a, the black culture in that way. You know what I mean? So that's, I started off before hip hop. It was all about funk. We mm. were just about funk and like, like, you know, but like all kind of black music. It was just about, you know, growing up Tina Marie and, and Lakeside and, and just um, um, Ray Parker Jr. and radio and just, we just were all into that, and, and then, and of course, Parliament and Funkadelic was just like everything to us. And Roger Troutman and Zap and Gat Band, and so that was it. Was just we were just about. I would just we always had radios when we had our bikes. We had radios. We used, we used to have to have a dope, a, two, a radio with our batteries, and we everything meant batteries to us. We lived off the whole summer. But can we get batteries, man? We man, our batteries going low, man. We gotta we gotta go cut some grass. We had to do something to go buy batteries. Just to be cool when we double ride on our bikes, but and then to have the best music, you know, because we had to get it off the radio and tape it and record it and try to, you know, it was just so it was, it was it was just a lot of that, you know what I mean? That and that's what got me into the music first. But I seen Marcellus uh, one day at his house. He had went to an Uncle Jam's army dance, and he 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 set up like a little realistic mixer with like two different kind of messed up turntables, and he scratched sucker MCs, he, he was telling me, look, man, I seen Bobcat do this thing right here. 
and he scratched the beginning of Sucker MCs from Run DMC, and that's what just got me like, oh, man, I want to do that. And so I came home, and I started messing with my mom's. Back then, they call, back then they called them consolas, which is like a kind of big box thing. Then you have your house, and you lift the thing up, and it turns tables inside. And <laughs> so I started to learn how to scratch on my mom's Mexican records, like a little bit with that. So that's what got me. Yeah, yeah, that's what got me into. Uh, that's what got me into like wanting to be a DJ. But I also was into dancing too, because I grew up in the neighborhood, and we all we'd, we would, we would lock and we would pop. And then breaking came, and I wanted to do that. So I always was involved in hip hop just because of my neighborhood and just the musical influence. So that's why on the radio, always in the 90s, I, was, I would always give it up to the black culture. You know what I mean? I, I never wanted to not recognize that or just, you know, just be like, oh, I did this. I'm Julio G. And, and they said, no, nah, really, I'm Julio G, but I'm really doing that off of black culture. I'm, I, their music is not. It's, it's it's where I grew up in with my black friends. You know what I mean? That's where I learned this from. So mm. I always wanted, I always gave in the 90s. I always would say on the radio from time to time because I, I always thought people needed to understand that. Like I don't want to take the full credit like that. This is this is a, a this is black people's culture. You know what I mean? And I'm in it, but I want to be the best at it when I'm doing it because it's for them. You know what I mean? It's for it's for everybody, but it's also for them because it's, it's their music. You know what I mean? So. And my friend Marcellus, like I said, he was my first black friend when I grew up, and he he was very influential. And and why what I you know everything that I've done in hip hop started from him. You know what I mean? Mm. From me watching him and being influenced by the music he he showed me. You know? So touching, Julio G. Yeah. It really is. It really is. How does it feel right now to be talking to me on your old frequency, fifteen eighty? You know, you know, you know. It's funny. You know, you know. It's funny, Dominic. I I, I want to say that too. I, I wanted to tell you that actually was that. You know, they they need to give you a lot more props because you you've been doing this for a long time. And, and one thing that I know about you is that you're authentic about it, and and it, and we don't have like a lot of authentic people in our in our communities like that. You know, you you have a lot of people that they could be black, they could be brown, but it doesn't mean that they're really authentically there for the people. And that's one thing that I, I admire about you. You you've been you know when I watch in the morning sometimes I I think to myself, say, damn man, that's cool that she's done that for Los Angeles for so long, you know, that you have a trusted source that you can go to that will give you the information. Thank you. You know, because we're, where we have so much misinformation out here today, it's very difficult to, like, really, you know, where are we as black and brown people? Where, what are we? You know, we're, you know, we need somebody to guide because it's, it's crazy the way they attack us from different levels. And then they try to put us against us, too, and there's a lot going on, you know what I mean? So we need, like, people like you that, that are trusted in the community, you know what I mean? That that can that can uh, that can explain to people what's really going on, especially in California right now, because we have a lot of things going on here. So we we need people like you. So they they, they need to give you more props on me. I mean, I give you props because I know what you've done, and <laughs> I just want you. people to know that that you're very authentic. You're a very authentic person, and you you've been doing this since I met you. You know what I mean? This same way. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> so I give you I give you mad props. I Thank give you. Mad props you. Props Appreciate yeah, that. Yeah. Paul wants sure. to know who you think is the best rapper of all time. This is very difficult to say all yeah, time. Yeah, I think so I'll too. T- I'll tell you, yeah, it's very difficult to say all time. But I will say, I will say that I believe that if you really, really narrow it down to like, because I was there at those moments, I would have to say that KRS One. Well, I would have to say that Rock Kim and KRS One have to be like molded into one thing you know what I mean but <laughs> those, I think I think those two people there are the ones that really changed hip hop to people don't even know that they're doing a lot of what they did today but Rakim and Karis one to me are the two pivotal people in hip hop that I would say I almost would mesh them into one mm. you know because of their impact and how they you know what they brought to the game you know what I mean yeah. how they changed the rap style if you listen to records before them, the rap style was totally different. They brought it into a whole new phase of like wording, <clears throat> language, and, flow. and pocket, and yeah. just flow, yeah. and just and just and, and just even did the word, just the content alone, just mind how, how they expanded your mind. Because we were a different generation back then, so you might you, we're we're talking real knowledgeable things in our early twenties, nineteen, eighteen. Yeah. We're talking these kind of things. You're not hearing that in music today. Like with the kids, like they're not really knowledgeable like that at twenty twenty one. Mm. Those records were written when these guys were twenty two, twenty three years old with just a lot of information. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so, uh, um, so yeah, I would say that those, those, um, 
I would put those two as as is my favorite. Julio G, thank you so much for joining me today. <laughs> this has been so much fun. Oh, thank you for having me. I appreciate it, Dominic. It's always good talking to you. I haven't talked to you in a long time, so it's really cool to like they reunite, you know, like the old days. Yes, indeed. Find him on Instagram. We gotta go. Tavis Smiley is up next until tomorrow. One love. KBLA 1580 Santa Monica. Thank you for joining us. I'm Mike Moore.